Hey everybody, uh, we're going to try something a little different today. Instead of doing a blue apron, so today's video is going to be about homemade apple pie. This is a pretty straightforward recipe as far as the crust goes. We've got our ingredients already laid out. I've got two and a half cups of all purpose flour, which you can see right here. I have one half of a teaspoon of salt, one cold stick of butter, one cup, sorry, and you see that I have ice in there. This is to keep it cold. The key to this, uh, to doing a crust, is cold. So you want to keep this cold, which I'll probably put this in the freezer right before I cut it up, um, and the water to be nice and cold. So, okay, so the first step that we're going to do is we're going to take that salt into our flour. It's not really difficult, it's all dry ingredients. Um, this is olive oil. I already poured out two tablespoons. This is dark brown sugar. You can see there's six tablespoons. This is regular ground cinnamon. And you can see this is one tablespoon. In addition to that, I have six Granny Smith apples. What's gonna end up happening is we're going to peel. This is a peel, or you can peel them by knife. Then I'm gonna uh, core them and slice them down into thin apple slices. So when you come back, I will have all six of these done. This is the olive oil. Cinnamon. In. Brown sugar. In. Give this a good spin. What do six peeled, cored, and sliced apples look like? Like this. Now, if you're wondering how I kept them from browning while I was doing all that stuff, I did put lemon juice on them uh, to keep them from browning. The juices are going to sit in, and once you get it, I think, up to heat, which I usually let it go for about a minute or two, then I'll turn this down a little bit, and we'll just let these simmer until they're nice and soft. And that's literally our pie filling right there. All I've done is taken our salt and flour and putting it onto our mixer. I have a pretty standard paddle on there, and I'm going to down and I'm going to turn this on. I think we got a between two there. And we're just going to start chunking in this nice cold butter that I pulled from the freezer. Again, all we're trying to do is get this to clump into the flour. It's really important to keep it cold, it'll make a better dough. You can see that the flour mixture has started to become kind of crumble. That's the sign that it's ready to start adding our chilled water. Now, from what I've seen, most of the directions say to do like a tablespoon at a time. I'm lazy, so I'm just going to pour in a little bit at a time. And this is when it will start to become an actual dough. Uh, my assistant helped me mix this together and we left with a little less than half a cup of cold water. I told her to start with one cup. So as I said, slowly add look down you can see that I've already pulled it out um, it's pretty solid what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply wrap it up you say it looks good what do you think does it look good is that a yes yeah can, you get a, can I get a thumb how about a fist no high five thank you okay so at least I've got my approval although it did take some convincing to the fridge our apples, as I said, we wouldn't need a lot of juice. You can already see this is just the juice from the apples itself. I didn't add any water. I'm going to let it go for about another minute, and you can also see that I turned it down between one and low um, for a simmer. All right, apples are done. You can see they're right here. I've put them into my blender. You're asking yourself, why did you put them into the blender? You can serve them like this as a filling. It's fine. I personally like them chopped up a little bit more because it makes it more bite sizable, and you're not getting a big slice. You know, to chew through. Think of McDonald's apple pie you know, with the little chops. So I'm going to put it in the blender, give it a couple of pulse chops, put it in the fridge, and then we'll let it cool for the four hours right next to the crust. And we'll... So that's pretty much the texture that I was going for. You can still see some pretty decent sized chunks, uh, but you also get a little bit more of a filling texture to it. So into the fridge, and now we wait. I've gone ahead and taken our dough out of the wrap. I'm just going to sit it right on here. I put about 
two tablespoons of flour. I don't want to dry my dough out, um, but I do need something to keep it from sticking. Uh, and all I'm going to do is put this down. And I'm going to do a little bit of this on my rolling pin. And I'm just going to roll this flat. Uh, once I get it rolled out, we'll come back and I'll show you how we're going to get it prepped into a disposable pan. Alright, so our dough is all rolled out. Uh, I'm just uh, doing a quick check to make sure that not only is it as big as the pan, but obviously there's some drops, so it's going to have to flop down in there. So. crust. Why do I have a bread knife? And this is how I decide to make sure that I'm getting the same width of strips across my board. It doesn't have to be accurate. It doesn't have to be you know perfect. But it does allow me to then flip this over and get my first lattice cutting. So I'm going to cut all these out. And then we'll pour in the filling, and you'll see how I do a lattice. But that's our first lattice, and it's just going to go across. Okay. This is the uh, apple filling that we made earlier. It's been chilling right along with the dough. We're going to fill our pie now. Six apples should just about perfectly fill this pie. How do we do a lattice? I, I don't know the, if there's an exact science to this, but I'm going to lay one on. kind of checkered pattern all the way across. Now I'm going to trim everything down, roll back out, and we'll make the next stripes. Alright, so I re-rolled the excess out. I'm just going to continue our pattern. I already pulled back the ones for this stripe. Alright, there's our latest apple pie. Some people will stop there. Uh, I like to do one more kind of finishing touch. I've got one egg in my hand. I'm just going to work out one egg white. Put just literally a splash of water in there. There you go, nice and frothy. This is a just a regular uh, brush. For cooking, not a paintbrush, that would be bad. And I'm just going to very liberally coat my crust. Now, this is going to do two things for me. It's going to give it that nice golden brown color, but it's also going to serve as a glue. This is granulated sugar. I 
I'm just dusting the top of this. And this is again to help golden my crust. But also put that little bit of extra sweet right on top. In case the pie should decide to cook out through the side, this will catch any of that filling. We're going to start it at 40 minutes, depending on where you're at, your altitude and all that other good stuff, it could go up to 50. It also depends on your oven. But she's in. And we'll come back and check on it in 40 minutes and see if she needs to go a little bit longer. Alright, so it's been about 40 minutes. Very hot. Um, so I'm going to let that sit for about 5 minutes. Um, again, it's, it's kind of a, a different texture than your standard apple pie. One, welcome to keep them sliced the way uh, that you saw that I prepped them first before I put them in the blender. I thought it was delicious. Um, please let me know what your thoughts are if you tried the recipe. And uh, let me know how it turned out. As always, check back uh, for new videos because I'm planning to do more like this. Do me a favor, give me the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Give me your comments below and uh, check back soon. Thanks.